We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So why do most people not teach the truth? I'll get to that in a minute. But first, let's look at a few verses with those key words in it. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now the word Christ wasn't there, so we'll pick that up at Galatians 3, 26, which says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Bottom line. You're saved by putting your faith, belief, trust in Jesus, Him alone, and nothing else. Very direct, very simple. Now, why do most people in churches not teach the truth? I'll give you six reasons. Reason number one, most churches, religious organizations, teach another gospel. They've simply quit believing the Bible, using the Bible. They rely on their tradition. I have covered this in Doctrines of Devils, video number 86. Please look at it. I don't have time to go over that video. They just refuse to believe simple and direct verses like Acts 16, 30, 31, the most direct question and answer in the Bible on how to be saved, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Second reason people refuse to teach the truth. They refuse to believe and teach that eternal life is a 100% free gift that was paid for by Jesus on the cross. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, how do we receive this gift? We believe on Jesus. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. To receive that free gift, you just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, him alone, and nothing else. Third reason people will not teach the truth. They refuse to differentiate between salvation and sanctification. Salvation is when you put your faith, belief, trust in Jesus, Him alone, and nothing else. You're saved a moment in time. Sanctification is after you're saved, and it's all works. It's works, service, behavior. It's a lifelong process. Please take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 through 7. Once again, that's after you're saved. I like Titus 2.12. It kind of sums it up real well, the whole sanctification process. Titus 2.12 says, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. But that's all works. And when you mix salvation and sanctification works together, you have a works gospel. Fourth reason, people will not teach the truth. They refuse to believe the will of God for everlasting life. God the Father made heaven, and he has a will for everlasting life. Well, what is it? John 6, 40, Jesus speaking. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. That's the will of God for everlasting life. And if you refuse to do the will of God for everlasting life, guess what? You're not going to heaven. That's the will of God for everlasting life. Fifth reason people refuse to teach the truth. They refuse to believe the saving gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's defined at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for our sins. If you look at those four, first four verses, I don't have time to read them. There's no works or service there. There's no obeying commands. There's no water baptism. All there is is you have to believe on this Jesus that died on that cross for your sins. Six reason people believe will refuse to teach the truth peer pressure. They are intimidated big time by the majority. I can't teach that truth. Nobody else teaches that. Well, I'm intimidated by God and the Bible. I teach the truth. You're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. You ever heard that phrase, one with God is a majority? I'm a majority because I am teaching the truth. Lastly, that phrase, by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone, does not have the word repent in it. Must a lost person repent? Yes. A lost person is lost. Why? Because they have not yet believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a sin. Look at John chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. Repent means change your mind. Look at Ezekiel 14, 6. A lost person must repent or change their mind of one sin to be saved. That's unbelief in Jesus. As soon as they put their belief in Jesus, they are saved. Bottom line, you're saved by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. If you want to teach the truth, you will teach that.